I have a story for you about this somewhat fabled ranch that I uh, wrote this book about. And uh, this uh, opening slide is a painting of the house that I grew up in. It, it was um, sort of infamous, infamously known as the Box Ranch back in those days. And the thing that's interesting about this story, and one of the reasons why I wrote this book, is because this ranch is still there. And as you all know, Frisco is an exploding place right now. So it was very confusing because what happened here is they came to our house in 1978, they did the first five episodes. And then they came back and said, we'd like to do the entire series here And my father, you're gonna learn more about him. He said, no thanks, get off my ranch. <laughs> so they had to go find a new South Fork. Well, the South Fork that they chose in order to fool the audience, you notice this house is white, it has columns. Also, this, this house is white and has columns as well. They were trying to trick everybody, and I think they did a pretty good job of that. This is what the house looks like today. Any of you drive by this property? Uh, this is at the corner of Preston Road and Main Street, Frisco, the northeast corner. It is not owned by my family anymore. That's all part of the story. It is owned by a man named Baxter Brinkman. It's now called the Brinkman Ranch. And Mr. Brinkman's very proud of his ranch because he has a sign just about on every corner. I can tell you a lot about the history of this place. One thing I cannot tell you is why this house has stood in this condition for almost 30 years. There's a whole generation of people that have literally grown up in Frisco. This house hasn't stood since 1987 that have driven by this place and wondered, what the heck is that? And so I wrote the book to answer some of those questions and to provide answers. This picture here is kind of interesting. This shows you how much Frisco has grown. This is the entire senior high school class of Frisco High School, 1969. They chose to have their senior picture taken there in front of our house. This is a picture of me on my horse. I was 13 years old and that was, uh, that was my horse. His name was Cutter Frisco, hence the name uh, Cutter, uh, name of the book is Cutter Frisco. He was sired by the championship cutting horse Cutter Bill. Um, I was 13 years old when this picture was taken and I was a little cowboy, thought I was. There's a much more important reason why I wrote this book, and it has little to do with the TV show Dallas. It has a lot to do with the future development of Collin County, because if we zoom in to some of these snapshots, these Google screenshots, you're going to notice the size and the location of this ranch is amazing. When I was writing my book, I went and talked to Ross Perot's real estate guy, and I asked him, I said, is this the most valuable piece of real estate in North Texas as far as raw land. And he said, well, there's two or three other nice pieces of you know, land up there, some nice tracks up there, but if I had my choice, I think I'd take y'all's old place. We come to the next little chapter in the story, and that has to do with my father. He had an unusual name, his name was Cloyce Box, and I was the youngest of his four sons and he just loved horses and he wanted to buy this property and have horses out there. Uh, but that's the reason why we were able to, you know, live that lifestyle, that sort of big Texas uh, cowboy lifestyle and it was all because of him. He made it all possible. A lot of people uh, used to say that my dad was the inspiration behind the fictional character J.R. I dispute that in my book because I think my dad was a lot bigger than J.R. and in fact he was much more like the patriarch uh, Jock Ewing than he was J.R. But people like to make that analogy just because it's it's easy to do. This is uh, a picture of my mother. I was very close to her. She passed away from a stroke in 2007. But I went away to the University of Texas at Austin for college in 1977 and I called home one day when I was a sophomore in college because I was close to mom. And uh, this was back in the days when you could actually get a young person to call you on the phone. And uh, I remember toward the end of our conversations, she said, uh, well, there's some people out here right now doing some filming. I'm like, really? Well, what's that all about? She goes, well, I don't know, but they get here really early in the morning and they stay really late. And uh, they seem real dead set serious on what they're doing. And I said, so 
what is, uh, what is the show all about? And she says, well, it's a, I think I overheard Chloe saying it's, uh, it's about a family that lives on a ranch. And I said, that's funny. Uh, that's going to be terrible. That's a show like, who's going to watch a show like that? A family that lives on a ranch? No one's going to like that. Well, I guess I didn't know very much. This is a picture of me when I was a, a sophomore in high school. And so uh, curiosity got the best of me. A few, a few weeks later, it was spring break. And when all my friends in Austin were headed down south to the beach, I was uh, headed back home up here to the ranch, Frisco. And as soon as I arrived, sure enough, Hollywood had come to town. And this was, uh, this, this was no, you know, couple of hippies with a backpack d doing a documentary. This was a big time, dead set serious Hollywood production. But for some reason back in these days, I was just very shy when I was in my early 20s. And uh, I refused to have my picture taken with any of the actors or actresses, which I, looking back now, I, how, how dumb was that? How cool would it be today if I had those pictures? But our housekeeper, Angel, he wasn't the least bit shy. Here he is with, uh, he's got that cowboy hat on everything. He's shown here with Jim Davis and uh, Patrick Duffy. The woman on the left is Victoria Principal. Uh, Patrick Duffy's there in the center. And then the woman on the right is what they call a stand-in. And her job is to stand under the, under the lights and let her makeup melt. And then when everything is just right, uh, they move her out of the way and they bring the star in and the star gets to shoot the, the shot. Look at Patrick Duffy there. Uh, he's got his hands kind of cupped. Don't you know he wishes he had a smartphone right then and there? He could just plop an iPhone right down there and he'd have 10,000 Twitter followers just like that. Remember, I was in college so I had to go back to school. You know, you know something about Cloyce now. I mean, you can tell what kind of guy Cloyce was. If I had dropped out of school and run away and joined the circus, he would have had me assassinated, right? Uh, so that was not an option. So I had to go back to Austin and finish up school. But you know, from spring break to the end of uh, the semester and the beginning of summer, it's not very long. And it goes by fast when you're in college because they let you out so fast. So uh, a week or two before uh, school was let up for the summer, I called home again. And I said, hey mom, how's, how's all my pals on Dallas? How's, how's JR and how's Linda Gray? And you know, how's all my buddies? And she said, oh, they're gone. What do you mean, gone? Well, you know, they, they packed up and they left, they're gone. And I'm like, I'm like crestfallen, I'm heartbroken. I'm like, but, 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 but why, 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 why did it? Oh, well, you know, your daddy, uh, you know how he is, is about his horse operation. Uh, they were very disruptive to the training of his horses. I'm like, is that right? <laughs> Those poor horses. Well, uh, I wanted to take a gun and shoot every horse on that place. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be uh, disappointed that Dallas had come and gone so fast? Want to see Doug on Dallas? Are you up for Doug on Dallas? Leaning up against a tree looks really easy, but it, you have to be a professional to pull that off. I was crestfallen when they kicked Dallas off, but uh, you know, I had no way of Back in those days, when you lost contact with somebody, you know, I don't need to tell you guys, there was no internet back then. Uh, there was, once they were gone, they were gone. I'm like, how the heck can I just get Victoria Principal back? I don't care if the rest of them come back. All I want is just her to come back. So I have this little thing, maybe come back, you know? Okay, I'm sorry, that's pretty corny. All right, back, back to our storyline. The backstory here is that my parents had a late in life divorce. My dad married a younger woman. There's a picture of her right here. She's my stepmother. We're still pretty good friends. And um, a little bit unusual, when my parents divorced, my mom moved out of the house. You know, that, that's a little unusual, I think. Usually the woman sometimes gets the house, but in this case, because it is a ranch and it's my dad's domain, dad kept the house and his new wife moved into the house. So what does a new wife have to do to a house that another woman has lived in and raised four rowdy boys. Redecorate burn it down. <laughs> burn it down. D says burn it down. But I heard redecorate. That's a better answer. Redecorate, exactly, sure. And so it was really just a, uh, an accident uh, that set the uh, house on fire in uh, 1987. I don't take this as defeat. We'll, uh, we'll come out of this okay. We'll, uh, 
start back just as soon as uh, the debris is removed and we'll rebuild. Investigators say the fire started as painters were refinishing the east end of the home, but there's no official cause yet. This is the aftermath of the house. Uh, he was never able to rebuild it, and he got this far along. He started building it back with a steel frame, obviously, and he died. And so his estate uh, after he died was insolvent. Uh, this was the late 80s. Uh, the, the last little chapter in this story is how my family actually lost the land. And for that, I have to turn to my dad's uh, sort of business career. My father didn't come for money. My grandfather, his father, uh, was a poor farmer. My great-grandfather was a farmer. Um, my dad, uh, the, the entrepreneur, is typically a person that in order to acquire wealth, you have to take risk. In the 80s, uh, a lot of families got turned upside down by the banking crisis, the SNL crisis, and so my dad and, and Trammell Crow, there's a, actual, there's a picture of my dad and Mr. Trammell Crow, at the closing table to borrow the money to build this massive cement plant in Midlothian, Texas. Anyone, anyone been down to Midlothian? It's the cement capital of the world. There's three cement plants there. My dad actually built two of those plants. So the next time you drive by Midlothian and you see that smoke coming out of the stack, that's actually my inheritance being burned <laughs> off there. <laughs> so that's why I do what I do to this day. This is what the entrepreneur does. The entrepreneur takes chances and he used the ranch because that's what he had to use. He would pledge that ranch because it was valuable collateral. Banks always want collateral. He would put the land up. They would get a business going. They would pay the thing off, pay the note off, and then you know, it'd be free and clear. So in the, in the 80s, the go-go 80s, they got a little carried away. They got caught up in the frenzy of the time. They borrowed $120 million, which Dad had to personally guarantee, and the rest is history. So that's, uh, that in a nutshell is why I wrote the book because you see, Frisco is just booming. It's just crazy what's going on in Frisco up there. They are building roads, houses, shopping centers. It's a big story every day. Most of the people that are relo relocating to Frisco are not from Dallas and they don't know anything about the history of this ranch. That's my story and I'm sticking to it and it's an honor to be here at, at your Rotary Club.